Hello and welcome to the Stripe Stroke Interprofessional Education Series. In these sections, you will be learning about post-stroke depression screening and management. My name is Linda Lim, Advanced Practice Nurse from National Neuroscience Institute, NNI. Together with me, I am happy to have Dr. Kinja Doshi, Principal Clinical Psychologist from Singapore General Hospital, SGH. Depression is not a natural part of aging. Depression is often reversible with poor recognitions and appropriate treatment. However, if left untreated, depression may result in the onset of physical, cognitive, functional and social impairment, as well as decreased quality of life, delayed recovery from medical illness and surgeries, increased healthcare utilization and suicide. Post-stroke depression is a serious complication of stroke patients and occurs at a high incidence. Frontal lobe stroke is the most common type of stroke that may cause depression. This may be due to the frontal lobe being closely related to the emotion, cognitive, memories, and other advanced functions of the brain. The frontal lobe is an important part of emotional processing and has a wide range of neural connections with many brain regions. Also, family history or personal history of depression prior to stroke could also treat. The signs and symptoms could be Overall symptoms like ongoing sad, anxious or empty feelings, loss of interest in activities or hobbies once enjoyed including sex. Cognitive or mood symptoms will be like feeling hopelessness, feeling guilty, worthless or helpless, difficulty in concentrating, remember details or making decisions, feeling irritable or restless, thoughts of death and suicide or attempt suicides. Various symptoms will include difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, a condition called insomnia, or sleeping all the time. Overeating or loss of appetite could be one of the behavioral symptoms too. Somatics and body symptoms include ongoing ache and pain, headaches, cramps, or digestive problems that could not ease with treatment, and feeling tired all the time. Just a quick note about the difference between apathy and depression. Apathy presents itself as indifference, the person seems to not have emotions, so it's often a concern to the family or caregivers, and it's more seen in the right brain stroke. As for depression, it's an emotion in which the person feels sad and often discouraged, hopeless about the future, and perhaps has suicidal thoughts. One of the implications of depression following stroke is its impact on the survivor's functional recovery. Stroke survivors who are depressed exhibit poor motivation to engage in and follow through with the post-stroke rehabilitation program. Research has shown that depressed survivors are less likely to engage in physiotherapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy. They are also less likely to adhere to their medications and have greater difficulty managing lifestyle changes, including physical exercise and diet. There are many assessment tools to evaluate mood or depression. In this section, we will be talking about Directory Depression Skill, GTS for short, and Patient Health Question AI 9, PHQ for short. Geriatric Depression Skills, GDS for short, was first created as a screening tool, tested and used extensively with the older populations. The GDS long form is a brief 30-item questionnaire in which participants are asked to respond by answering yes or no in reference to how they felt over the past week. A short form GDS consisting of 15 questions, as shown here, was developed in 1986. The short form is more easily used by physically ill and mildly to moderate demented patients who have short attention spans and or feel easily fatigued. It takes about 5-7 to seven minutes to complete. The GTS may be used to monitor depression over time in all clinical settings. Any positive scores above 5 on the GTS form should probably have an in-depth psychological assessment and evaluation for suicidal ideas. The patient health questionnaire PHQ-9, as for short, is an easy-to-use self-administration version of the prime MD diagnostic instrument for common mental disorder. The PHQ-9 
scores each of the nine DSM-4 criteria as zero, not at all, to three nearly every day. It has been validated for use in primary care. This is not a screening tool for depression, but it is used to monitor the severity of depression and respond to treatments. However, it can be used to make a tentative diagnosis of depression in at-risk population, example those with coronary heart disease or after stroke. The score of 0 to 4 indicates minimum or non depressive mode, 5 to 9 in the mild stage, 10 to 14 in the moderate, and 15 to 19 in the moderate severe stage. The management and treatment of depression may include one or more of these options. The first being medication. Post-stroke depression is treatable with a variety of antidepressant medications, including selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and tricyclic antidepressants. In addition or instead of medications, a survivor may benefit from attending counselling or psychotherapy sessions with a psychologist. Cognitive behavioural therapy has been shown to help survivors overcome depression and reduce the likelihood of its relapse. In fact, the guidelines say that the best outcomes are often medication and psychotherapy together, whereby, with time, should an individual show that his, his depression is in remission, that he may wean off the medication and sustain on psychotherapy until he is able to manage on his or her own. Physical activity in the form of physical exercise or social activities with family and friends has also shown to improve a survivor's general mood and functioning, thereby alleviating depression. And finally, Participating in one's community and or a community of stroke survivors and caregivers mitigates isolation and loneliness that is a common factor among those who are depressed. Overall, the management and treatment of post-stroke depression involves all in the care team. This includes doctors, rehabilitation therapists, psychologists, social workers, nurses, and most importantly, the survivor's family members. The take-home message for today's session is assessment for post-stroke depression and its treatments is necessary to promote the functional recovery and overall well-being of the survivor.